we are back. Thanks for uh, sticking with us. Uh, for our second session, we are welcoming Lucas Long, a product specialist from our Tag Inspector team. And he is joined by Cassie Segel, who we just found out has a new title. So congratulations, Cassie. She's Senior Vice President of Data Governance and they're at L'Oreal. And their session is aptly titled, Being a Privacy-Centric Advertiser in an Acronym-Heavy World, or an AHW as I call it, Lucas. So I will turn that over to you and uh, looking forward to the session. Amazing, thank you, Pat. Um, and so yeah, we wanted to kind of introduce more of the compliance side of things here. So what does it take to be a successful advertiser in keeping privacy really at the core of all of the different aspects that we're doing? Uh, now we're seeing as Michael and, and Sean talked about um, in that first session, um, all kinds of changes from GDPR, CCPA, regulatory changes, as well as things like ITP and the deprecation of third-party cookies within Chrome. And so how do we do this um, amongst all of these changes and really um, ensure that compliance moving forward? So kind of getting underway here, um, when we talk about those different changes on, on this next slide here, um, we're really talking about three primary things. So number one being consumer expectations and what it is that our users and our customers are expecting from us as brands. We're also seeing tons of changes and all kinds of restrictions being introduced as a result of regulatory updates. These are only happening more frequently across the globe. And then also those technical restrictions, as I just mentioned. Now, to start with those customer expectations and how those are changing, we're seeing a rise in digital maturity uh, for users. Everyone now is just more online. And with that, they're expecting a lot of that personalization, that experience uh, to be improved. I know for me personally, I you know get upset if something doesn't work properly on a website or if I'm going to search for something and I can't find it. Um, it's just the expectation that I have. But a lot of that in advertising and marketing more broadly um, has really relied on that personalization, that one-to-one -one piece. And as many organizations are really focusing on that, lost touch um, in a lot of senses with the privacy expectations of those users. Um, as the sophistication and the understanding of users around the data practices that are going on, the profiling that's happening, targeting that's happening, um, have really increased, it has brought you know, this large sea change um, and put that into place. So to ask Cassidy here, from that privacy perspective, um, what is really the number one thing in your mind that advertisers need to address in order to meet these rising consumer expectations here moving forward in this privacy-focused environment? It's such a good question. And Lucas, the reality is, is that I'm going to stick to an old cliche, which is that you have to, you know, say what you do and do what you say. And you mentioned the complexity of where we are. And I think it's actually harder than it's ever been because there is such a sophistication of the ecosystem. And it's, it's, it's not a singular, it's a plural, right? Because when we're talking about our consumers, we may be talking about how we engage with them in physical retail stores, online, um, and, and everything is data-driven. And it may be our marketing communications, our email communications, our, our serving of ads, our ads that they watch OTT. And so I think that given the complexity, we have to take a pause and we have to see how all the dots line up. And we also have to understand that it's not an easy one-size-fits-all. And so I think that, you know, just really sticking to basics and really making sure that you actually know how you're doing what you're doing is, is really step one. Yeah, I think that's an you know, amazing way of really succinctly putting it, uh, saying what you do and then doing what you say. And a lot of those expectations specifically around saying what you do are enforced by some of these regulatory changes that are being introduced. Now, on this next slide, we kind of have just a, a very basic uh, timeline here. And the biggest thing here, you know, we started out uh, even before GDPR with e-privacy, which has been around in Europe uh, since the early 2000s, uh, those consent requirements as it relates to the accessing and the placement of cookies being really codified with those consent definitions within GDPR, 
And the GDPR, CCPA in the U.S., and even more state-specific laws just this week, uh, the California state legislature uh, putting on the governor's desk a new privacy uh, legislation sorry, for Colorado. Um, we're seeing a lot of those principles for disclosure, uh, requiring disclosure, requiring those access rights and things for users. Um, with all of these different regulations, um, and especially with the patchwork kind of privacy approach in the U.S., if you had to distill really what's important for advertisers to know, to three or four points, what would those be? So I would add, before we even frame the three or four points, I would add that the consistency of transparency and notices is also going to be implicated, not just from the regulatory changes, but also from our from Apple, Google, the use of UID, the use of server or server integration, where you you know may be living in social. And so I think that what's going to be really, really important is being able to tell the consumer, talk to the consumer with transparency in a consistent way and give them a consistent experience, um, knowing how fractured the environment is and knowing that we have states with different obligations. And so I think, you know, the different obligations of the states could feel incredibly overwhelming. But if you start and your core is built on, your privacy house is built on really a thorough understanding of your data and a really great mapping, it makes the process of adjusting and pivoting for these different states a lot easier. It's funny, I just got off the phone um, from a call with my consumer care team that really is the sort of the front lines with dealing with the consumer. And we were just, we were joking about how now we've got Colorado too. And I think that what's exciting is that if you build that first house right, you know, you really can continue to make improvements, but it really is about spending that time up front and really knowing where all that consumer data is, how you're going to pull it, and how you're going to um, address consumer rights, uh, depending on what they are, um, you know, given the patchwork quilt. So that's, a, I guess, a really interesting um, kind of concept and one that is becoming even more challenging given the technical restrictions that are being imposed. So that consistency of, of data and being able to consistently have those conversations with an individual user across channels, across devices, um, they're kind of expecting now uh, with some of these technical changes that uh, we will throw up on this timeline as well. Um, specifically around the deprecation of third-party cookies and some of those duration restrictions that are being imposed on first-party cookies. Um, the big implications there is that we lose that traditional way that advertisers and technologies have used um, to you know, provide that unique anonymous ID for users that have not offered up or provided named information. So, with those changes happening, and you know, we're talking obviously a, a number of different sessions here around durable strategies and what's going to work in order to um, you know, be able to successfully have that conversation and successfully understand those users here moving forward. There's a number of different approaches that a lot of vendors are coming to advertisers like L'Oreal. Um, people, you know, solutions like the privacy sandbox, the privacy preserving APIs, Google and um, Chrome are putting forth, as well as a number of vendors that are talking about alternative IDs. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure from a privacy practitioner standpoint, uh, people talking about probabilistic IDs, which is kind of a nightmare. Um, but what are some of the core things as uh, you know, the advertisers that are, are joining us here today are vetting some of these new approaches and technologies what should they really be keeping top of mind and considering as they're thinking through these new strategies to start using with their organization? I think operationalize, how we operationalize the solution is going to be really, really important. It gets really uh, exciting to get involved in some of these conversations. There are so many different ones, and I think that really understanding what the implications are and how we can... Um, how we can also hold our vendors accountable 
so that we are not, as advertisers, the ones that are left sort of holding the bag when the downstream activity doesn't match what the user expectation is. And I'm seeing, I'm already seeing some real life examples of this. And I've been very passionate at the various trade associations where I'm very vocal on this point of advertisers need to get into each of these conversations, whether it's with Google or with Pram that's working on UID models or other server to server conversations to make sure that we know how the, the supply chain works and, and who the parties are that are accountable and that each is accountable and that we're not the ones who are left with, I, I recently saw one vendor that will stay nameless, you know, mention that in serving ads, that advertiser, that, you know, the why you're getting this, the answer was because your advertiser has the right to sell their data to us. And that's a really terrible message. Um, and, and that's not the way we want consumer, that's not the way that we're handling our relationship with our consumers or with our, with our third parties. And so I think, you know, it's I'm in a very roundabout way saying that we as advertisers need to hold everyone accountable. We need to jump in not only to understand what's being presented to us as potential solutions, but we also have to advocate on behalf of the consumer and the process to make the user experience really um, easy and understandable. Yeah, no, certainly this makes a lot of sense. And that accountability piece for the vendors and the different platforms that we're working with, I think is, is really critical. Um, it, and it's also, as you mentioned, in, as mentioned in the first session, a lot of these approaches to the technical changes, they're happening in real time. We're in a very kind of unique environment right now where we have a set um, as advertisers, as the users of these platforms um, in a way in which I, I don't know has always been the case. I mean, every technology obviously says that they're user focused and they're wanting to embed their users in the design phases and everything. But the fact that everyone has kind of full visibility into what's going on, as well as those discussions um, for the solutions as they're being built is, is a unique kind of situation that we find ourselves in. And I really like that um, kind of idea that's, that is on us uh, as advertisers to really put ourselves in those conversations to, to drive that future. Um, yeah, I agree. And I think the most exciting thing from my perspective is that um, there was so much opacity in the environment for the last 10 or 15 years. And we really were taking our providers at their word and there really wasn't a way to have accountability. And while I do think that we're gonna see lots and lots of solutions, I, I actually think the exciting part is, as you mentioned, we can actually get in there with them and, and, and really um, drive for transparency even within the ecosystem. Yep. Um, so beyond just, I guess, um, being a part of those new solutions and helping to drive some of those new technologies, I um, also want to focus a little bit on what are the keys to success for us, for us as advertisers as we're really approaching this. And if we jump forward a couple of slides here, um, and we start talking about our keys to success, um, and I know in conversations that we've had in the past, we've kind of distilled these down to really three core areas, uh, with the first one being what you had alluded to earlier, really understanding the current state. Um, so I, I know for us at InfoTrust, we always talk about um, people, platforms, and process. And so doing that evaluation to start understanding, given those changes that are happening, both regulatory and the requirements and disclosures that we need to be making to users, um, as well as those technical changes and the limitations with some of the uh, strategies that are today reliant on, on specifically third-party cookies and those anonymous identifiers, taking really uh, a good look at what are all of the things that we're doing today? What are the platforms that are in place in order to support those different strategies? Um, and then how do the teams really work um, in order to support all of those activities as well? Getting all of that on the table, um, I kind of liken it to uh, whenever you're moving or reorganizing, you take everything out, put it all on the floor. It's kind of a mess 
uh, at first, but it provides that opportunity to really take stock, divide everything up, organize it, and then put it back in its truly proper place. Um, now, as organizations are working through that process of understanding their current state, what are the key pieces of information and the key pieces of documentation that if they don't have visibility into today, that they should really prioritize and put at the top of the list you're moving forward? So I'm really obsessed with data mapping now in a way I never was. And I feel like um, given, you know, that, as you mentioned, everything is happening in real time, having a real snapshot and continuing, I mean, it's a living thing, right? So as things are changing, it makes it easier to unpack and move those pieces around, as you said. But you really need to start with that really great picture that has been truly, that, that really um, sort of lays out where everything is. Because I do think, Lucas, a lot of this is happening so fast that we're we're and and you know nobody wants to miss a beat and then add to it that it's all fractured right like so so you're 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 dealing with UIDs here you're dealing with flock and fledge here you're doing with you know and and so you really have to have that understanding so that you can both allocate the resources that you will need initially to to make sure you're doing it right and so you don't have a big mishap Definitely makes sense. And I guess with that concept of, of data mapping, um, from your perspective, are there any aspects of that process um, that you found to be really like a key? Um, I know data mapping oftentimes can be very difficult because we can have visibility at the point of collection, um, but some of the downstream and some of these new concepts introduced by legislation like uh, the CPRA that are being introduced that are talking about even secondary forms of processing down the line. Um, I guess, what are some of the key areas for data mapping that you see that organizations and, and advertisers uh, can really bring to the table? So I think that probably the most painful thing is realizing that it doesn't stop. And so we have a relationship today, we map it, and like the beauty of innovation and being at a company like this where we are constantly doing something new and we have so many different ways of communicating with our consumers is that you may be our vendor and we may map you to do X, but as the evolution of our innovation happens, we have to keep coming back to it, right? And so I think that that's probably one of the hardest things to do, but it really is the key to privacy. Right, because it's not just one and done. It's not just a message on your website. It's really about you know continuing to look at, see what you're doing, calibrate it, and make sure that you really are you know walking the walk. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense with how everything is so dynamically changing. Um, and it's not enough just to you know, take that inventory or do that data map at one time and then, hey, we have it. I think we can you know, dig it out. <laughs> we did it three years ago. Now it should still be relevant. With technology and how fast it changes, um, there are it's such a dynamic process, um, which really gets to that second point there around those keys to success of embedding privacy into strategy as well as operations. So asking those questions, um, you know, what information is collected, holding those vendors accountable, doing those data maps, understanding, you know, what, uh, what processing activities are we doing? What are we trying to get out of this? Um, and concepts even like data minimization that are, again are, are being introduced as a result of some of these new, um, new laws and, and regulations. So as far as those questions, what are things that advertisers should be asking of vendors, of other internal teams? You know, the data folks maybe don't know uh, what the marketers are doing down the line. Um, so what questions should they be asking and where should they be asking those questions in the process? So that's, oh, that's such a good question because it really has to start at the very inception of the project. And I think that's how you really build in privacy by design, but importantly, that's when you really have the attention of all of the teams and having, it's not enough, as you said, to ask the folks that are managing the data. You really have to understand 
the expectations of the marketers about what their use case is and sometimes really help them focus, right? I think that, you know, it, it's one of the hardest things for me in my practice every day is saying, okay, this sounds great. We're going to run this campaign on, you know, Triller, uh, you know, okay, so how does this work? And, you know, it's actually the hardest part because you really, I have not successfully figured out how to automate that. I think you really do have to have this human interaction and often with, with the vendor too, because the, the stories vary. Um, and, and you really, to get that crisp and get that right, I think is super important. And what that also does, I think, is it helps all of the parties, the advertiser and the vendor, understand why the nuances matter so much and when they have to come back. And so it's it's that accountability too that you're building in and you're creating this mindset. But it's really difficult. You know, it's it's about change management too and it's constant, right? It it never stops. It's a living breathing thing and you have to keep doing the due diligence and asking those reporters questions. Yeah, and one of the things I even with the scenario that you mentioned, marketers, you know, they'll, they'll come and say, "Hey, we have this amazing new campaign, this amazing new tool. Um, oftentimes, kind of in my role, I'll find myself, I almost feel like a, a referee uh, between the advertisers and the marketing teams that are really excited about a new technology or a new tactic and the compliance teams um, and the privacy folks that are like, whoa, 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 like, let's, let's slow down. And I think that oftentimes people forget that you're all working on the same team. You're all trying to work in that, in that same direction. I guess from the compliance side of things, what are maybe some insights that you might be able to provide um, that advertisers could kind of bring to that discussion to bridge that gap a little bit? I think at the end of the day, it's about the consumer. And I think that if you can remind everybody that this is about a great journey for them and how are we going to make it really fun for the consumer and how do we make sure that we are thinking about how the flow works so that it's easy, it's not overly complicated, so that our messaging is clear, and that we're protecting them. And so I often like to step out of the, this is about legal, and I really like to remind them that it's totally about our consumer. And is she going to be annoyed by seeing all these messages from us? Is she going to be frustrated by the volume of emails or receiving something when she's opted out. And so I think when you really turn it into something that's about that, it gets a lot easier. Um, and it also makes the brands more willing and advertisers more willing to go back to partners and say, I don't really think you're the owner of the data. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, this is how it should work or to really get their buy in. So, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense and it relates to that final point there around customer centricity. Um, and that's really been a, a huge topic and really the goal for many organizations, especially in data practices here over the last several years. Um, and we often talk about customer centricity and, and having that 360 degree view of the consumer so that we can deliver the ideal experience across devices, across channels. We can deliver that personalized messaging, both in their interactions with our brand, as well as in targeting decisions and, and the ads that we're showing so that everything is, is really relevant to them. Um, with the end result being, if we deliver the best experience, then we're going to drive the most revenue and have the most really business success. Um, I think one thing that's often been lost in that is we think about the consumer in kind of the center of all of our activities, but we forget that key component that you alluded to there, that we need to also be empathetic of their view. And that view now, they care so much as you know everyone does, you know, we are consumers as well, um, about that privacy piece. And we talked about it before with the, uh, just those changing consumer expectations. So embedding privacy as a part of that you know, centricity, embedding that within those designs uh, for the data operations, for our advertising um, operations, as well as the strategy, um, and really making privacy uh, that brand proposition, um, making sure that we can ensure that consumer trust have that really close relationship with the consumers. 
But it goes back to one of your points earlier. You have to walk the walk uh, when doing that. It's not just a regulatory requirement, but if you're making that a brand proposition and you do not follow through with that, it has really serious kind of impact um, on, on the organization and on that consumer relationship. So what are some ways that advertisers um, can ensure that they're, they're doing that, placing privacy at really the center of that uh, customer centricity and that brand proposition? So the first thing is, I do think that um, the moment is really different with our consumers and consumer centricity is such a value to us as our ethics as an organization. And so I think that, I think we, as we continue to put that at the center, it also means questioning the way that we do business and questioning some of the tactics that get proposed to us. And we are not afraid to walk away from things that sound too good to be true. And we're also, we can't be afraid to hold those vendors that choose not to play the way that we think they should play accountable. And so that may mean cutting them off. That may mean uh, really rethinking their value in the ecosystem. And it may also mean, it's really kind of exciting for me to start hearing people questioning whether that 360 view, whether some of the things that have been done really do add value. And I think that a lot of promises have been made to advertisers about the value of certain, you know, certain opportunities. And I'm not sure that it's all there. And I think that that is going to increase as everyone seeks to become a media platform and you know, activate their 1P. And so I think it's just really important to continue to come back to that, Lucas, and really remember that privacy is not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and we saw earlier from those timelines, it's only gaining steam and it's, it's really kind of picking up the pace, um, if nothing else. So one final question for you, um, as sitting on the, on the privacy team, if you could request from the advertisers that, you know, within your organization, um, if they could do one thing to make the lives of the privacy and compliance folks easier, what would that one thing, what would that one request of them be? Start early, <laughs> you know, talk to us early and think about privacy as part of this exciting new initiative that you want to kick off because it's only going to happen in 2021 if we thought about privacy too. And, you know, I think that if, if they remember that and we start that conversation, we can't go wrong. Amazing. So the changes that are happening, obviously, as Sean mentioned in the first session, we're all in this together. Everyone's facing the same privacy focused future, the same um, technical restrictions, the same regulatory requirements together. And at the end of the day, they're all in response to what those our consumers want. So if we are putting our consumers at the center um, of all of our different practices and thinking about them and their wants and needs in that privacy context as well, um, it naturally makes sense just to uh, do the common sense things. Um, that's best for those consumers and hold all of those vendors and everyone we're working with accountable as well. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Cassidy. Um, and I'll kick it back over to Pat. Awesome. Thank you, Cassidy and Lucas. That was super informative, really good information. I'm um, starting to see a little trend. So Sean talked about his three truths. Uh, Lucas and Cassidy talked about three keys to success. Uh, so for the rest of the speakers, get your three points across. We want everything in, in points of three. So, um, again, thanks for uh, thanks for that great presentation. We're going to take a five-minute break and be back at 1230. And please stick with us. See you in a little bit.